Dom K in here, Greg in the building. What's going on, man? Man, we got so much, so much stuff to talk about. So, so many uh, uh, classic things, and then some, uh, some current things. Uh, let, let's start off with Molly Ma, right? Legend, legendary. Yeah, People yeah. throw that word around a lot. Legendary this, legendary that. But I think that Molly is a legitimate legend. Yeah, because he was definitely. Uh... He was definitely the man at one time. He he was definitely the man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess uh, some of those early Molly Ma records, like, what do you think is Molly Ma's biggest biggest record? The symphony. Yeah, the symphony. Yeah, that uh, uh, symphony was definitely definitely big. Um, mm -hmm. so we talking about shit, we were youngsters at this time, but. <laughs> What do you have a favorite like uh verse or or or, or artist on the symphony? Man, uh I don't have a favorite because uh, what I liked about the symphony, the track was so hot and fire, is that as the song went on, the song just built up more and more to the climax at the end. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean it, it started off hot and it just ended like on fire, you know? Yeah. Um and the video, you know, the video was crazy, mm -hmm. definitely for that time. Right. Um, Marley is credited with being the first sampler in hip hop. Yeah. Um, is do you, you? I guess you think that is a is that accurate? I'm gonna say yeah, because really one of the first songs that I can remember being a, a well, not really a sample, but using somewhat of a sample was uh even though I think it was replayed, was uh, uh, Eric B. is president. Yeah. The baseline. Yeah. Even though it was replayed, but uh, I think that's one of the first ones. You're talking, what, 86? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to throw some songs out there that Molly did and get, get, get your quick thoughts on it. Jingling Baby Remix. Hi, oh, my God. He, man, that sample. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, you know... Uh, that 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 sample, the samples that he used in that song, especially when when he uh, freaked it with the city line. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, man, <sighs> man, he killed that that whole album. Yeah, Mama said, "Knock you out." Molly produced. Yeah, from the beginning to the end, I could play it nonstop. Yeah, that that is is definitely my favorite. Mine too. Yeah. Um, uh, LL Cool J album. Mine too. And, and it, it for so many reasons, it, it's just it it came out at a point where people were not really giving out his just due. Right. They, they felt like he was over and and, and washed up. And I, I think if Molly doesn't come and uh, uh, you know contribute to this project, you know, I think he has a problem. LL has a problem. Right, because uh, "Walking with a Panther" was an okay album. Yeah, um, I think when that came out, which was like what eighty mm -hmm. nine, uh, the the rap scene had changed so much mm -hmm. um, w w within that year and the year prior that everybody stepped their game up. Whether it was the, was the, the the lyricists or the or the or the, or the uh, producers, everybody stepped their game up. You know, and um, L LL definitely did come back with that one. He yeah. did. He came back with that one because that that that's my favorite uh album of his and uh some of Molly's best production right there. Absolutely, absolutely. And um let's go down this list. Okay, she's dope, Bell Bib DeVoe. I don't remember this song. You remember this song? Yeah, yeah. Why can't I think of this? Yeah. Well, I don't remember the, that was was it hot? This is this off the first Bell Bib DeVoe album? Yeah, it's off the first one. Okay, I don't remember that. Um yeah. ain't no half stepping. Come on now, come on! Classic come on. here. Um, um, they, I mean, Kane killed it with that. I mean, the, Molly with the production. I mean, the video was hot. I mean, you know, oh my God, he killed it with that, man. Yeah, you know, yeah, ain't no half stepping. Uh, was 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 one of those um uh, samples that's just mm -hmm. uh right. Yeah, I don't I don't know how how you can uh you can't front on that. You no, know what I mean? No. You can't you can't front on that. The fellas liked it, the girls liked it. Right. Um, of course, we talked about this. Mama said knock you out. Come on, man. You know, L had a little bit something for uh 
I mean that that album he had a little something for for everybody. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, he kept the street. You know, he kept it. You know, a uh, little 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 R and B splash in it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You know, a little crossover. It was a little bit of everything on that. Mm-hmm. You know, absolutely. Uh, another one from that album, Round Away Girl. Oh, big hit. Big, big hit. hit. Yeah. Big hit, man. Yeah. Big hit, man. Yeah. You know, once again, that production and and those two were it seemed, it seemed like they they were definitely a match made in heaven. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because man, look look at it, man. You know, around the way, girl. You know, what is it? I want a girl with extensions in her hair. Yeah, I mean, it was just for that time. It yeah. just it, it felt like mm-hmm. it, it, this is how I visualize. I visualize like either Molly came to LL's grandmother's house and they was in the basement. Or LL went over to Molly's house and they just was locked in, like it was it, vibing. It just, yeah, vibing. Yeah, man. definitely, vibing. definitely. And and then like you, you also got to remember with uh, at that time, which was 1990, you got to figure the, the 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 New Jack era was hitting hard. Mm-hmm. So they they bought a little everything with that man, mm-hmm. you know, because the the music scene had really changed, man. And uh, and it, and everybody wasn't able to keep up. No, they you weren't. I mean? you know? So um, but it was also competitive oh yeah very super, very super competitive because people were coming i mean at that time man the, the hits were coming and it seemed like it just kept getting better and better you know competitive uh, we we spoke about it a little bit this next one uh <laughs> the juice crew symphony oh, that, that that you know that's a classic man i mean it's, it's just uh once again uh the, the that, that track was fire absolutely that track was fire Absolutely. You know, anytime you take an Otis Redding sample and freak it the way he did, oh yeah. my goodness, man! You know. So, uh, folks at boom, Boondocks.com have "Young Gifted and Black" uh, on here by, by Big Daddy Kane, which I, I like that song. It was okay. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a cool I song. That. that was cool. Um, I did not realize that Molly did "Girls They Love Me" by I, Heavy D. And the I Boys. did not know that. I used to love that song. Yeah, it's I great song. That. Yeah, I, I didn't realize. I that. did not know that. Yeah, another another big record. I didn't know that. Yeah. Know that. That, that's a new one on me today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we was today years old. Uh, <laughs> uh, the Music Man, Master Ace. I like that song. It was a cool song. Right. 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 Um, Master Ace, he never blew up, blew up. But, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, Master Ace had a solid career. Right. And but he uh, got a lot of shine off of the symphony, though. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. He got a lot of shine. This is one of my favorites right here. Big hit. Road Big to hit. the Riches, Cool G Rap, and Polo. Right. You know, man, when this was out, man, they got a lot of radio, I mean, a video play. Yes. Uh, on this song, man. It was crazy. The track was fire, man. Yes. You know, like I say, the track was fire. And, and like, with, with this song, what I like, none of Molly's stuff sounded like. Right. Everything Which is why like, we can easily say, I ain't no Molly did that yeah, song. because, like, okay, like, the, the Girls That Love Me by Heavy, and then this song, don't even sound nothing to like, you right. know, you know, right. So yeah. And, and I think that also goes back to the fact that Molly was such a fan of so many different styles of music. Mm-hmm. So his influence is coming from all over the place. Right. You know? Um, so yeah, right. definitely. Um, that, uh, so that was, so they had road to the riches music, man, girls, they love me young, gifted and black symphony round away girl mm-hmm. mama said knock you out ain't no hair stopping she's dope jingling baby okay and All right. then and then you got to forget eric v and rock him you know he did yeah absolutely absolutely we, we we talk about we have this conversation often about eric v and rock him yeah, right. um to me molly is like the the uncredited well he's credited but like the third member of that group right and uh you can clearly see with the first two singles off of uh, "Paid in Full," you see the difference in the production. Yeah, you don't have you don't have Molly on uh, all of the songs, and, and that's why. Uh, do you consider "Paid in Full" to be a classic? Well, I guess it is a classic. It but is a classic. Yeah, is it? It's not one of those albums that you can play start to finish. You do have no, to skip a few songs. Yeah, right, right. Because it was like three, uh, three throwaways on there. Three okay, so what do you consider Chinese arithmetic throwaway? Yeah, yeah, I agree. Eric B on whatever Eric B is on the cut, yeah, and that uh move the crowd instrumental. instrumental. That that was that is like super random. If I could if I could ask Molly a couple questions, one of them would be why did they put that 
instrumental on it. Or maybe that's not a question for Marley. Maybe there's a question for Eric B. Rock Kim. Yeah, I always wondered because it was just kind of like, why? I mean, that's that's something that you would have on a single. Yeah, you know? which we bought a lot of singles, right. but and, and and we would buy them for the instrumentals, right. but we didn't buy an album for an instrumental. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? And it was kind of like, once again, I just thought it was just an album filler. You know? Well, here's the here's my thing. Why didn't they put that? Um, that extended remix of Paid in Full on that album instead of the instrumental. That's a good question. Because that would have made more sense to me. Even though you had the original version on there, right. the version that I played on the radio was that extended, it's what the, was it, 16 minutes? Seven, so, the seven minutes. Seven cold, minutes. Cold cut mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They used to play that on the radio. That got heavy, heavy radio play. Yeah. You know. Like you say, yeah, that that would. I don't know if it was done in, at that time. Maybe, yeah. And that's what I'm thinking it was, but I would have put that on there, you know, as a remix as opposed to uh, those three throwaway songs, you know. So when you talk about Molly Maul, the, the the legendary career he had, um, so many groups that he touched, um, uh, Lords of the Underground. Oh man, I love that song. Um, Chief Rocker. Yeah, she, yeah, that just you know that track um, was fire. I mean, you you even go back to to to, to his early stuff with MC Shan and, and Jean Tay. Yeah, you know, um, or the stuff he did with Biz Markie. We ain't talk about Biz Markie. Definitely, you know? definitely this, legendary. I mean, and, and this was at a time where uh, the exposure weren't what wasn't there at the time. But mm -hmm. you know, for the artists, man. yeah, for the artists. But yeah. uh, those are timeless classics, man. You know. Yeah. So uh, as, as far as as the golden era, so we talking about in the eighties. Where do you rank Molly in, in terms of producers? Is is he he's in that top five? Or was he in the top ten of producers from the eighties? From the eighties, yeah. Uh, I would say top three. Top three, yeah. All right. So what? So so what? What is who's his competitors? Here? Is you talking about Dre? If okay, if you are talking about the late eighties, uh, yeah. I would say Molly. You definitely would have to say Dr. Dre, and um, I would say Herbie Lovebug. Herbie Lovebug. Okay. You know? When you talk about somebody like Herbie Lovebug, um, Herbie Azor. Right. Right. This in this picture here, we have Herbie and artists that he produced. Right. Um, you see folks like Salt and Pepper, mm -hmm. Spinderella, uh, Sweet Tea, Shantae, Kid and Play. Kid and Play. Mm -hmm. Um what uh uh why doesn't Herbie get the I don't know the shine that that some of the folks like Marley or or Dre or or, or some of those some of those guys. Why, why doesn't Herbie get that shine? I don't know because uh, he he just seemed um, he just seemed like he played the back real good, and uh, I don't think he wanted the spotlight mm -hmm. because uh, he was very successful as a as a producer, like with Dana Dane and all uh, all the groups Kwame. I mean, all the people that he produced. And but you never saw him in the front. He was always out of the picture. Yeah, you know what I mean. And uh, even know, but he had vocals on songs, but he wouldn't be. And right, yeah, like like he did background vocals with Salt and Pepper a lot. Right, but he wouldn't be in the video. Wouldn't, stuff, yeah, right? you know the only time I remember seeing him in the video was Push uh, It. He's in Push It. Push It, and I think uh, um, I think it was Shake Your Thing. Yeah. And briefly, briefly like he's yeah, not yeah because yeah. i think he played a cop or something yeah, yeah. He, he's not a focal point right. nothing like say diddy <laughs> where he wants to be in yeah. the video um now we were talking about this off off camera if herbie does not stop working with for whatever the reason was salt and pepper does salt and pepper's run last longer you think no you still no. think it didn't no. it wouldn't have no no you got to remember man he but he, he 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 did the production and he wrote their lyrics. Mm -hmm. You see what happened after uh, let's talk about sex. I don't think he worked with them no more after that. Right. And then you see the result because they had one hit after that, and that was What a Man. Which was a big hit. Which was a big hit with in vogue. Yeah. But after that, it was over. Yeah. You know, and um he was a major part of the group. He 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 knew how to write for them real good. Uh 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 he he um he he was good for writing for them and the production was on point. So he was he's like from the islands or, or something like that. Yeah, he's um he's Haitian. He's Haitian, okay. Yeah, yeah I I liked Herbie. I I, I did. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously him and Salt had something. 
going on and, and maybe that ends. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's tricky because I when you know, when you have that, you know, just just think of you know, relationships that we've been in. Think of one of our long-term relationships. And and we in a group together, and then we break up. Could we have still been able to work together? But not at yeah, all. Well, and, and then uh, with him, uh, they dated from eighty four to eighty nine, and uh, he had a baby on her. Oh, yeah, he had a baby yeah, that's tricky. Woman. Yeah. So that, that well, that makes sense. So that's she was so, like. So that kind of messes things up, you know. <laughs> you know. So yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, do, so all times. You think that Herbie goes down in that in that all time list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you you have. I mean, look look at his track record at the time, you know. And um, and we talking like the late eighties, even though it was other dope producers. But look 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 at look at the track record of what he did and what he accomplished with the with the multiple uh, solo artists and the groups that, yeah. that that were successful at that time. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and Kid and Play was a uh, Kid and Play was a big deal. Right, You're talking about house party, talking about right, uh, getting funky, which is one of my favorite right, records. Right, you, uh, I think they album what too hype. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that album. I like and, that album. And then the production that he did with Dana Dang, you know, even though Dana Dang didn't have the success like the other groups did, but yeah, he was pretty hot. Sweet Tea was pretty decent too. Yeah, I, I yeah. like Sweet Tea. It's my beat. Right, right. Dana Dang song, uh, Cinderella. That was a classic. Yeah, that was a classic. Yeah, that get the party going, man. Yeah, you know? definitely. And you know who I think that other you remember we said the other producer that used it? I think it was Herbie. That it was a sample that we were listening to okay, early. Okay, I think okay. that was Herbie okay. that, that used that. But um uh stuff he did for Shantae, I like. Mm-hmm. Uh looks like you like him Shabazz in there. Oh, that's old. <laughs> <one right> there. <laughs> wow. It's just it's um uh if you think go back to salt and pepper. Yeah. So you remember, see, we 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 old school, so so we're gonna remember this. But you remember there was another Spinderella before right. the one Dee Dee that everybody knows. Right. Right. But on the first album, there was a whole nother Spinderella. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, you know, by the time Hot Cool Vicious came out, she wasn't nowhere to, to be found. Right. Uh, but that that's just one of them things, just figuring out, okay, that's not going to work. Yeah, We're going to keep it moving. I remember, uh, I remember that because I remember watching, I remember I had the album and I'm looking at the video and I'm like, hold up, that girl don't look like this, this ain't the same person. Mm. I remember, like, wow, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, so so I this part I don't know, and, and I saw the um the VH1 or, or uh, the, they did like a docu series on on yeah. Salt and Pepper, but um uh, they didn't really cover this on there. But I don't think that in the beginning, Dee Dee uh, Spinderella was doing the scratches. I don't I don't think she really she knew how to be a DJ. She, she wasn't. I yeah. Think, I think she learned as time went on. That was all Herbie. Yeah. That was all Herbie, you know. She learned as time because you could you could tell. Yeah. You could tell. She just had that. She was definitely a part of the group. And, and I hated to see um she was a big part of the group. Spin and 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 salt and pepper have that fallout that they mm-hmm. had because right. she I consider her to be part of the group. She is part of the group. I mean, she was she was there for all the success. And uh and, and she can I she did I, vocals. She, yeah, she did vocals and 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 she, and she brought beauty and swag to definitely. the group. You know, it's very pretty and uh yeah, so definitely part of the group, you know. Yeah. It's yeah, it's, uh, it's um unfortunate. Right. Um so uh shifting gears uh, a minute recently passing away. This gentleman here. Oh man. Mark the 45 King. Mm, right. Uh and we talking about somebody from this, this, this same time period. The same, the same era. Yeah. The same era, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This guy, the tracks this guy had for, woo. Yeah, you so know. we we are in high school, and this record comes out <laughs> called the Nine Hundred Number. number. Yeah, I don't even know why it's called Nine Hundred Number. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, but it's... that record, I'm I'm talking about. There was a, when that record came out, that was one of the biggest records out. Right, it was one of the biggest a records. Straight out. beat, and yeah, killer sample. That's all it was. No words, no nothing. I had the record. It was a 45. I mean, it, it was 45 speed. Yeah. You know? Yes. It right. 45 right. speed. And he did it on purpose. It's yeah. on, uh, I think it's on Tough City. Um, yeah, you're right. Yeah. It, it, was it was on Tough, Tough City. City. Yeah. yeah. Tough City. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that was just, man, that was just, and yeah. later on, they, uh, some artists put vocals to it or whatever, but everybody liked that original version with, yeah. with no words. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they even had a video for it. 
Well, DJ Cool did that. Uh, okay, right, right, right. Throat, yeah. Right, and that that was hot, right? He sampled it, mm-hmm. and it, it yeah, it's just it's mm-hmm. just it's just, a, it's just a hot song, right? But of course, him recently passing away, and and when a producer or artist passes away, people start diving in their catalog, talking about they mm-hmm. did this song, they did that song, right? Uh, uh, let's run down some of those songs that 45 King did. All right, well, let's start off with one of the first ones that he did, what they got known for, was uh, Wrath of My Madness. Queen Latifah. Did not know he did that. Yes. He I that. love that he song. That I love that, that song. I yes. love that song. You didn't know that, man? No, he I did, did not that. realize that. I did not realize man, that. Man, come on, Diamond. That's one of my favorite songs by Latifah. Yeah. Yeah. He killed that song, man. Yeah. You know? That production on that, it? yeah, that's crazy, <laughs> man. That was crazy. That I mean, like, uh, that's one of my favorite tracks by him. Mm. You know, I, man, when that came out, I was just like, that, like, like I was talking about how competitive stuff was at that time. Like, that was like what eighty nine, ninety mm-hmm. when the Tifa dropped that eighty nine, yeah, eighty nine, and then like, so L, like we was talking about L, how he had to come back. You know, was 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 was, was something that could compete, right? Because everybody was bringing it, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, I, I I love that record. Um, and that's that's off that first album. Yeah. Um, and th- all hail the queen. Yes, mm-hmm. and I, that if that wasn't the first single, it, it was the second one. But it might have been that might have been her first single. I think that was the first single. Yeah, that, that was that was a hard. Yeah, I, think, song. I think that was the first hard song. Yeah, man. Well, you digging with that one, man? You know. So what 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 other tracks did you like by him? Um. So I, of course I love the Jay Z song. Um. <laughs> Hard not life, and that was that was that was just a hard song. And and the thing is, is that we're talking about at this point. Uh, this is you know the late nineties, right? You know what I mean. He had had a run for for uh, you know like his his big success from nine hundred number. You talking about almost ten years later, mm-hmm. and then he comes out with the song for who was the biggest artist at that time, Jay Z. Right. Uh, that was that was a big record. That was a big yeah. Uh, that was a, a big huge record. record. It, 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 it was a huge record. It was huge. But um, what I didn't know until a couple of days ago, you know, after he died, I did not know he produced Eminem's song, Stan. That was yeah, a huge I didn't know record. That. Definitely. I definitely. did not even know that, man. Definitely. Uh, he was able to get these album placements. And, and I guess it's out of respect. They like, sure, I'll take a record from you. And and, and he came with but, some heat. But that song got a lot. Oh, definitely. Radio it's a big record. Play, I mean, big record. Video play. The video was, I mean, it's killer man you know and like i said but once again man the the the, the show that, that that you a dope producer man like none of his stuff sounded like everything sounded completely different man you right. know and and, that, and that's what i like you know right and when you have somebody like you said that has um a long career mm-hmm. most of the time uh, a newer artist wouldn't necessarily want to track from you because your sound would be dated right but that wasn't the case with somebody like 45 King. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, I definitely, definitely don't think that he's gotten the respect that he deserves. A lot of people sleep on him, slept on him. Right. You know what I mean? But right. definitely, definitely want to shout the dude out. Any other uh, tracks uh, that we the, need to highlight? Th- those are the main ones. Of, uh, um, you know, th- those are the main ones that 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 most people that know, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, he also did stuff for Ghostface, Diamond D. Oh, I ain't know that. You know, um. He did something for Biz Markie. Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, I knew that. He did something for Craig Mack, Mark yeah. Kim. So he worked with a lot of people. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, he had a, he had a good run, uh-huh. and um, definitely want to want to say uh, rest in peace to that brother. Right. One of, one of the biggest comedians in this in this era. You, you definitely could probably say one of the biggest comedians of all the time. Right. Right. He, he's definitely definitely. Um, a big money maker. Folks come out to see him. Mm-hmm. Uh, n- not someone who shies away from controversy or, or controversial topics. Right. Uh, so right now they're giving him flack because he's some folks, I guess, have walked out of some of his shows because of he's made comments about um, uh, Israel and and Palestine and and. The, war that's going on over there right now what what are you what are your thoughts on uh, uh the great dave Chappelle? i was kind of surprised that uh he he made the comment especially when when he uh had so much flack from the uh last controversy that he had yeah and i didn't think that he would even want to go there with uh any of these topics 
and especially when you're talking about this one, yeah, with this Israel and Palestine thing, you know, and um, you know, I I I I, I get what he's saying, but I don't think he needed to say it, <laughs> you know, because you know, you know, Israel is is, is Jewish, and then you know, uh, Dave Chappelle is a Muslim, so you know, it's kind of like a you can't say this or you you know you shouldn't say this or you going you know it's like you damn if you do and you damn if you don't yeah yeah and i guess that's a good point because because he is a muslim mm -hmm. uh, and you're talking about uh something that is affecting muslim people mm -hmm. uh you know folks in in uh in that region you, you have a, a very large muslim population so i guess you're right i didn't even think about that part right if he doesn't say anything with his platform, then you know his Muslim family is going to be looking at him crazy. Well, 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 well. Do you think, as a comedian, Dave Chappelle is a comedian? Do you think he should say something? Is it, I, you is know, it I read place? some. I read some stuff online where where a, a commenter said, "Why why do we have to hear uh, comedians or entertainers talk? You know, a, about these type of things, and you know." It's tricky because a comedian, usually when they go up to do their set, they're talking about what's happening in the world today. You know, this is going on. If the president, they would be talking about Trump right. and, you know, with a, or Biden or, you know what I mean? It's just like you talk about current events. Mm -hmm. uh, now, while this is not a current event in America, it is definitely dominating uh, mainstream news coverage. If we, if we turn TV on right now, as of this taping, it's going to be something on a right. bunch of channels about this. Right. So it is a current event. It is a controversial event. Now, to me, uh, I guess I can understand more so people talking about an athlete. Why is an athlete talking about political things? But a comedian, I mean, they tell jokes about current events. I guess you can, if, if it's any entertainer, um, I guess I could see him make a case for but you're not gonna have a lot of comedians that's gonna even touch this especially man like it's two things that, I, that i've seen the last 10 years definitely is like speaking on something as far as you know uh saying anything about the jews or anything about you know uh gays or lesbians or stuff like that you, you kind of like you kind of like opening up a can of worms if you say something you know because so many people are going to get offended Right and 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 take it the wrong way and right you know so it's one of those things I mean, but my my thing is 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 that as a comedian, um, while I think I have comedic timing, I definitely not a comedian. I have never been on stage telling jokes, um, so I, I can't say that I know what goes into that. But I have been on stage before, mm -hmm. and I know that you know when you're coming up, you're not going to necessarily want to cross certain lines because you're trying to get popular. Right. You're trying to make money. Dave Chappelle made a lot of money. Dave Chappelle can walk away from the business right now mm -hmm. and still be fine. So now he's doing it for the love. He's doing it for big money, too. Right. But he's going to take chances that some younger people won't, won't take. Right. But the flip side of that is you got a lot of people that's made a lot of money that don't want to take no chances because he's like, look, I'm just going to be on cruise control. I don't want no controversy. I'm going to do this. So it's, Dave Chappelle is an interesting, mm -hmm. is an interesting space. You know, like you, some people, you know, the, the athletes, they'll say about athletes, you know, the shut up and dribble type of thing. Right. We don't want to hear your opinion on this. But it's just like if it was a politician and they didn't agree with it, they wouldn't want to hear their, their opinion. The people that say that only want to hear people give the opinion that it's the same as theirs. Right. Like I say, and then you can't please everybody. So, right. you know, it's, it's kind of one of those things, is, you know, it goes both ways, you know. Definitely. And, and then like, you know, the, uh, you know, the media is going to run with it. Definitely. And, and and by him being, and I'm going to say it, a black man, uh, they're they going to make it seem like he's anti-Semitic and all this other shit. You know what I mean? So it's, it, they, they're just going to run with it. You know what I mean? I mean, do you think this is different than the the trouble that Kanye found himself in a few months ago? Uh, I'm going to think, well, I mean, yeah, it is different. Um, but uh, I mean, yeah, it is different. But uh. I, I think Dave Chappelle is going to get through this. Yeah, you know? I mean, he got through right. the because the, because like I say, if you listen 
See, what people fail to understand, you got to listen to everything he said. Yes. And it wasn't nothing against the Jews. Right. He was saying, hey, look at it from both ends. Right. You I know? don't see nothing wrong and, with it. And I didn't see anything wrong with it. You know, what Kanye said was completely different. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why they was on him. But what Dave Chappelle said, you know, he was giving his point of view from the Palestine point and, uh, and the Israeli point. Which, I mean, hey. I don't it, see nothing wrong with that. And, and then, like, a person like me that, that doesn't run with the drama, okay, I listen to what he said. And it's it's his opinion. That's true. Too. It's his opinion. You know what I mean? People and people can have their opinion. And, and, and like everybody's opinion ain't going to be the same. Absolutely. You know? and, and so we, we talked about this before. And and um, uh, so I, I don't think it's not nothing wrong with us mentioning it now. All right. So you, you have Dave Chappelle. We talk about Dave Chappelle. Yeah. Nothing that Dave Chappelle said would stop me from wanting to go see him perform live. No. At you know, at all. Nothing, nothing would, would stop me from wanting to see that. Right. Now. When you have a a someone who is selling something, right? Okay. Uh, my pillow guy, Mike uh, Liddell, right? Yeah, idiot. Uh, definitely an idiot. Yeah. Let's go back. I don't know, five years ago, right? right? We in Walmart. We in, trying to buy some pillows. We see my pillow up there. It's a reasonable price. I would buy it if I needed I a pillow. I would buy it. Right. Now in twenty twenty three. Hell no. If I need some pillows and I see my pillow, I'm not buying it. I'm definitely it. not buying it. I'm shit. not buying it. I'm not supporting him. Right. So why is it different that we don't we don't agree politically with Mike Liddell? He's he's like super crazy MAGA. Right. And um, why is why do we look at that as being different? Why we won't support his business versus uh if if he was an artist, will we still support him? A Mike Lindell type? Yeah, a Mike Lindell type. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. I wouldn't. Uh, let's take it like take it like this. What about Tesla? Oh, oh no, no. Yeah. I, you know, let me tell you like this with with, with that guy. Was that Elon? Elon Musk? Musk. I would never buy nothing of his. Nothing, nothing. Because, like I say, man, if you got a business, and we talked about this before, okay, the whole object of a business is to be successful and to make money. Why would you alienate a certain group? From buying your product, right? No, you know, and then like with, with, a, with a guy like 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 Elon Musk, he makes his stuff completely clear on how on how he uh, you know, he he yeah. makes, he, makes, he puts it out there. Yeah, he puts it out there. So no, like like with him and, and Mike Lindell, hell no, mm -hmm. you know, you know, because like I said, I don't have to buy your product. You don't. You're not the only one that make an electric car, right? Definitely, especially you know? now. Yeah, you're not the only one, and they got some good ones out there, right? You know, so that's how I'm looking. I'm not spending my money with you. The uh, the business and the bottom line of Tesla has been affected by Elon Musk being so public with his conservative views. Well, you look at Mike Lindell. He's about to file bankruptcy. Right. <laughs> because they, they pull your product off of Walmart, off of uh, Bed, Bed Beyond and Bath Bodies Work, whatever it is. They take, an, uh, they take your product off of all this stuff. Walmart is a, is, is a company that's up here. Yeah. They don't want to be associated with that nonsense. They trying to make money. Right. Bottom line. Bottom line. So you know what? We don't even need you because we got five other people selling pillows in here. We don't need your product in here. Definitely. And you bringing that um, neg negativity. Because people going to start saying Walmart's carrying him. We going to stop supporting Walmart. Exactly. So they got to, we got to cut exactly. ties with you. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like I say, I, I'm not going to sit up there and spend, and spend my money. And and this person, you know, de degrades us or try to put us down or whatever, and he's he, he's he's showing his true feelings. No, no, uh -uh. you know, and like with like with Mike Lindell, uh, uh, about to go broke. Fuck him. That's how I feel. <laughs> right. fuck him, you know what I mean? Yeah, fuck yeah. Him, you know what I mean? No, I agree. I I you know? I, I never like him. I never trusted him. Me neither, man. <laughs> fuck him. You know what I mean? That's how I feel about you know. Like I say, Elon Musk with it with that Tesla. Man, you got five or six more brands out here. That you can go buy an electric vehicle from. So he act like he Elon had, Musk act like he the only one making electric yeah, cars. Yeah, yeah. A couple of years ago, he, he was. He he had the. Uh, he had it on lock. Yeah, he had it on lock. But now, you know, you got all these other brands, car brands. And you got these hybrid cars yeah, too. You know, we don't. You know, you don't need him. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, and, and the thing is, is that it's unfortunate because have you ridden in a Tesla before? No. Yeah, I, I um, my brother in law had one, and I took a Uber in Dallas. That was a Tesla one time, and that was it was nice, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But 
I would never spend my money. Right. On. Never, right. ever, ever. Right. Exactly. Spend my money on that just because of him. Exactly. Not just enough. because of him. And I'm the same way, man. I'm the same way. I definitely know? don't want no my pillow either. <laughs> no, no, no. Make sure no. it's not no my pillow. Yeah. It's nope. Not no my <laughs> pillow. Yeah. Um, yeah, but uh uh last thing, just just and I know it's not on the on the docket, but your boy Trump. Oh, man, he is uh I've been watching some of his his speeches and his public appearances. He's slipping. He's saying Obama's still the president. He's he's confusing hold people. On, on. Like he's Diamond. doing all kind of stuff. Diamond. Let, let, let's let's back up for a second with, with your boy. Is he obsessed with Obama? Yes. Yes. He it, is it, obsessed. It, it, it seems like he's just uh, infatuated and, and obsessed <laughs> with this guy. Yeah. You know, he, he he can't stop. He just can't seem to. He, 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 it's, it's, it's like that's all he thinks about. I, I don't understand it, but I'm sure that uh, President Obama is not thinking about President Trump. Not at all. <laughs> you know, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's like, you know, this guy, man. And then, like I say, the, 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 the walls are caving in on him. You know, pe- people are turning, you know, and it's just a matter of time, man. Like I say, he will not uh, uh, be the nominee for uh, the Republican Party. OK, and they're going to make him take a plea deal, man. You know? Yeah, he's going to have to take a plea. I don't I don't see deal. any way around this. Right. Like the case that that they have lined up against him, especially that case that's in um in Atlanta. They all solid. Yes, they all solid. Man. And those people are peeling away. That thing might not even go to trial. I don't think it will, man. <laughs> Look at all the people that 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 are taking the plea deals now. Yeah. And you talking like Sidney Powell, was it, was it Kenneth Chesbro, whatever, whatever, mm. Chesbro, whatever his name is. Mm. All these, and, the, and the other one, was Jenna it, Ellis. Yeah. Yep. You know, dude, it's just Scott a matter of time. Hall, it's, right. just, it's just a matter of time. It's already full as of, as of what we're doing right now, and it's going to keep being people. Diamond, they, these people are looking at it like this the, the government is not playing. No. And then, two, reality start to kick in when they start talking about jail time. Yeah. Are you willing to go to jail for this motherfucker? Who wouldn't even spit on you if you was on right, fire? Right. Who does not give a a crap about you? Right. And and right now they got Ivanka. Uh, she they trying to get her to testify. She's trying to get out of it. Uh, if if she's forced to testify, he's then, done. Uh, she, he's done. he is well, so he, done. Well, he's already done now, but it's just a matter of time, man. Listen, man, they are not going to jail. They want to go back to living a. Uh, they they live like yeah. Ivanka is rich. She want to go back to living her life. If yeah. that means throwing him under the bus, then that's what she going to do. Right, because at the end of the day, like we said so many times, he's not going to jail. He's not going to jail. So man. the thing is, you will end up with not being president, not being in politics, not you being know, able to run for, uh, not being uh, able to do that. Right, yeah, you will pay some fine. You'll be on probation, whatever. Mm-hmm. He's still gonna be able to go around and 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 spit his whole his whole spill to his followers and right. raise money. He's going to be able to do all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. His life's going to go on. Right. It's just that he's not going to be, able to be president and do certain things like that. Right. But he ain't going to jail. He's not going to jail, man. He's going to lose these cases, though. Yeah, he is. Like I see, better take that, that plea deal. He, gonna, he, he needed to take that L. Right. Oh, man. That, that plea deal <laughs> and, and put it behind him because he's going to lose if he try to go through with this. What um uh, I agree. What uh uh what you listening to right now? Old or new? What you listening to? Uh, I was listening to uh, on the way over here. I was listening to the game. What what which album? Uh, it was the documentary. I think it was. Uh, oh yeah, two point five. I love that yeah, album. Yeah, yeah, I love that whole I, series. I think I was listening to that. One. The the two and the two point five to me, or 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 one. Which which was better for you? They both good. Yeah, and um, I also like uh. Uh, um, the one with Alameda on it, um, Block Wars. It was, I like that. It was, yeah. it was a couple of man, you 1992. Know. I like that yeah, one too. 1992. 1992. That's I like the one that. I was thinking about. Yeah, I love that, man. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah game a- is uh, right. Uh, I wish, man, I really wish I was in Atlanta at this time, but I wish that him and 50 and Dre could have all still been working together yeah. because game with with 50s. Influence is is even more sharper because like, it's more radio. It friendly. was an unusual combination for the you know the, the couple of songs they did. I like it worked. It, I mean, it, it was like I wouldn't have put them two together, but it worked. It worked, you know. And I guess 
I don't know whether it was just egos or whatever, man. But oh, it know, definitely was. You know. Definitely was egos. I, I I saw something yesterday. Uh, Styles P is a great dropper album, and he's he's doing his last tour. This is his last uh, solo album, right? And he's doing like a farewell kind of tour. And Fifty just got off a big tour, and um, you know, so I'm just wondering. I, I mean, aside from Drake and um, uh, Twenty One Savage, they they just had a, a successful tour. But these old, the older artists are selling out shows all over the world, and you got some of these younger artists that's kind of struggling to to fill up, to get people to come out to see them. Like, what do you think that's about? Uh I think it's the quality of music they putting out. Yeah, you know, I mean, no, I take that back. I I just think that the music that they putting out today, not all of it, but some, doesn't have the it it it's it's not going to be timeless. It's it's not going to be. I mean, you can't sit there, you can't dance to this stuff, you can't groove to it. You know, it's just, it's, it's just, it's the type of music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, Drake, I think he'll be fine. Right, right. You know, but, but like a lot ten of, years from now he'll be fine. But yeah, some of these fine. artists, ten yeah, years from now, these songs ain't gonna stick in your mind. Like you know, yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's just a, you know, it's just the, 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 the quality of music has, is kind of fell off in some ways. You know, R and B and rap. Not all of it, but some. So, so that's the part that's missing because we were just in here listening to songs, right? That we listened to when we were kids, right? You know what I mean. I just don't know of, uh, you know, kids, somebody that's like ten years old right now, they're gonna be listening to these songs. Right. And, and 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 even some of the B songs that we were just listening right. to were good songs, right? Like, right, man, songs that we hadn't even heard right. before, like, right? Man, or like we heard, or we haven't heard in a long or time, long time. Like, Man, you know, and you sitting up here, we was up here just grooving, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, like wow, mm -hmm. you know. But mm -hmm. like I say, man, the, the quality, man, you know, the quality, you know. Quality is super, super important. Like I um about earlier, I was listening to too short. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't fight the feeling. You talk about life is right. too short. I'm talking about now, that you, album. Now, you know, you know we, you, we go way <laughs> back on that one. You know, we go way back. You don't want to turn me on to Too Short. Yeah, yeah, man. You know? Too Short is uh, too, too Short legend, legendary. And, I, and actually, I'm playing it on the way home. Too Short. I'm playing yeah, it on the way home. That's a good album. Good you album. Know? I'm playing it on the way and home. And Born to Mac. I like that song, too. Yeah, oh, you, that, you that, oh yeah, yeah. Now, the, the one that uh, Shorty the Pimp, that's the one you like. Shorty the Pimp. I love that album. Short Dogs um, in the House. Short Dogs in the House. Love that Short, album. Man. Um and uh, uh get in where you, you fit, fit in. in. That's yeah. my favorite one. Yeah, get, get those in. those that, right there. Get in where you fit in. <laughs> Shorty the pimp. Yeah. Short dogs in the house. Life is too short. Born to Mac. Those five albums are too short. Those are my favorite five albums yeah. are too short. Good stuff, man. And he still got more albums than that. Right. I got one for you. Uh, what do you think about E Forty getting that street name? That oh, way? I'm so glad you brought that up. E Forty is look. Okay, I I I'm gonna say it, and it is there's there's a lot of artists that's like this, but E40, I am the first person over this way in Baltimore that was yeah, playing E40. Yes, you were, and I was doing this in the early '90s. You were, you were. <clears throat> and well, you so, was the first person playing too short. I was first person playing too short. Compton's most wanted. Compton's most wanted. Um, C no Bo limit. All that stuff, man. Uh, Cash Money. Uh, definitely Sebo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, but E40 so well deserved. Legendary. This is a legendary dude. He does. He does. And like I say, man, you, you look at the guy's track record. I mean, since what? He came out in what? 92, 91? What? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's been consistent. Yes. And yeah. you're talking over, over 30 years. Over now. 30 years, you know? you know, whether it's E40 songs, whether it's with the click. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Him, you know, getting a E40 way in Vallejo, California. Right. Um, have you been near there? Yeah. In Vallejo? Yeah, it's the Bay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so. Um, I haven't been in Vallejo, but I've been near it. Yeah, yeah. So that, I haven't been been to Vallejo mm -hmm. before, but mm -hmm. I definitely would like to check it out. And right. uh, so he he uh, was doing it independent, E40 was. Uh, they right. selling records out the trunk, like a lot, a lot of the OGs. Mm -hmm. Signed a distribution deal with Jive right. for Sick with it and uh and work with them for a while. And mm -hmm. now he is uh independent again. He's he's got a, a wine uh he got, company. He and, got so many business ventures, man. Yeah. It's just crazy, man. Always you see him front row at the uh Warriors, uh, game, Warriors games, games, and yeah, he's he mm -hmm. been with his wife since high school. Like, yeah, yeah he yeah. just 
I mean, I mean, you even talk about like you say, the, like the click, like well, D legit, mm -hmm. well, we'll D shot, just, we'll, yeah, D shot, we'll sugar tea, sugar, sugar tea, tea. Yeah. yeah, you know, you know, I mean, the the, the guy is just definitely. Move, I mean, he did movies, yeah. he's done did it all, man. Yeah. You know? You know, yeah. you know, I he mean, had legend. He had a legendary um uh, versus with, uh, too, with short. too short. Hey, that yeah. was good. Though, it man. was good. That was good. It was man. good. He was wasted though, yeah. but it was good. Yeah, that was good though. <laughs> it man. was. It I was. mean, because they could have went on and on and on. Oh yeah, with the hits between them two. Definitely, man. That was crazy. Definitely. Man. And one thing I love about E Forty is that you know when he first came out and he first went national when they when they signed with Jive and and even though I was down with them before he signed with Jive. But uh, people was like looking at him crazy because he rapped different, right? Talked different, but he embraced it. He never changed, mm -hmm. and uh, he's had big hits, still doing the same style. Well, man, the, the the guy has invented slang. He's invented slang words. I mean, you know, hey, hey, he 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 made his own way. Yeah, and 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 like I say, you never heard about him up in no controversy, no, no drama, no. And see, one of the things I liked about the Bay rappers, the Bay Area rappers, were they all was tight. They, I mean, yeah. they supported each other. You yeah, know? you know, yeah. and and then you got here, you got Too Short, for example, and you got E Forty Two, the biggest stars in the Bay, and you know, it, it the best of friends, right? Get along just fine. Get along. They got fun. albums together. They do after that versus they they drop they had dropped the album together. Mm -hmm. They do shows together, right. and like you say, some of the other some of the other big dogs over there, like like Snoop, like Warren G. Mm -hmm. um, you know they cool with them too, right. and and, and they right. they collaborate with them. So I, I really like that right. as well. Um, uh, the West Coast is 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 pretty much, you know, they be united like that, and that's mm -hmm. and that's a good thing to right. see. But like I mean, like even when you go back to the uh, to to even go back to MC Hammer, none of the Bay Area people ever said they always praise Hammer. Yeah, you know, yeah. So. Hammer's a legend. Yeah, he's a legend I, I, I like over Hammer. there. He's a legend over there. You know. Yeah, so, he, you know. he did. He did some big, big, big things. Mm -hmm. and, and people, I think somebody said something online. I, I saw him um, come up in the mentions or whatever. Mm -hmm. Try to say he was a one hit wonder. MC Hammer was not a one hit wonder. What? Yeah. Try to say MC Hammer was a one hit wonder. I, I, MC Hammer was. You know was what, definitely man? I'm not. I'm not even going to comment on that because you, you know his track record. Oh yeah, absolutely. The, the success that that guy had. Yeah. Was on at that time. Yeah. You talk what he what he hit the scene like in '88. Yeah, and, I wasn't the first person playing Hammer over here, but I was one of the early ones. Yeah, you know, because definitely, but I, I was playing him early. That man, you know, it's it's just like he, he was. Every now and then, somebody comes along where you see him, like you see the video or whatever, and maybe it's the first time you see him, you be like, "This guy going to blow," or "This person's." Gonna I blow. felt like it, and about like him. with him, because it, 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 this guy was completely different. Yeah. And what he was doing at that time, yes, man. And then the, hey, you know, this is this. We talking about let's get it started. You know, that time, let's yeah, get it started. Yeah. That's like eighty eight. Right. That's that's we talking about years before you can't touch this. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Let's right. get it started. Turn his mother out. Right. Those kind of songs. Right. Um. Uh. And then they put me in the mix. Pump they, it they up. Pump it up. Yeah. All that. They, stuff, that's man. all before. Right. You get yeah. the. You can't touch this. Right. Then you talk about you. You can't touch this. Right. And then he had songs after that. So it's just yeah yeah. Well, definitely, definitely legendary West Coast stuff. Yeah. We can go, we can go on and on about the West Coast. Yeah, you know, <laughs> exactly, man, exactly, man. All right, man. All right, so this this was a good conversation. Thank you as always coming right. through. So we gotta do this again, and um, no doubt. It's, it's always stuff going on to talk about. So, uh, my man Greg, thank you, sir. Diamond K. All right, all right.